thanks for stopping by my channel. If you did, before you leave, just stop, consider if you like my content, share, like, subscribe. All right, slight intro. What are we doing? Well, we're making bread. The weather is still kind of miserable, but if you notice, I'm hands-free today. No, Amazon did not come through with my tripod, but my glorious and wonderful and super nice Uncle Mello with his in Italian ingenuity crafted me something until my eye, my, my tripod comes in. So thank you very much, Uncle Mello. I'm now going to make a loaf of bread. Well, four, because four. But I'm going to be delivering one, social distancing, to my uncle to say thank you very much for the, the tripod. Uh, he's a big fan of bread, as we all are. Now I'm making white bread today. So what we've got so far, you're going to use your stand mixer. So I've got my yeast kind of proofing. Alright, it's already doubled in volume, so I'm going to be ginger about it. So to this, I have two-thirds of a cup of really warm water. I have one pack of Fleischmann's traditional yeast. So I'm going to let it proof for 15 minutes because it's not fast acting, it's not the instant, it's not any of that. So we're going to let this one proof for 15 minutes. So two thirds very warm water, one package of this, and a half a teaspoon of just regular old white sugar. I'm going to let it go for about 15 minutes. Um, at that point, I'm going. we'll go through it at that point. Um, I am making a double recipe, so I'm going to make a secondary recipe after I'm done this. Uh, uh, so making a double recipe. I believe some friends of ours have come down with COVID-19 and they really aren't really going anywhere. So I thought maybe it'd be nice to drop them off some homemade bread. Um, also, we're having just a basic chicken noodle soup today, and I thought some tuna sandwiches with your chicken noodle soup would be lovely. So homemade bread for that, because when I checked my cupboard this morning, I don't have very much of the white bread, like the Wonder Bread or, or whatever, um, that the kids like for the sandwiches. Uh, keeping that in mind, I'm also going to be using, aside from my stand mixer to do all the kneading for me, my Instant Pot to do my rise. If you don't have an Instant Pot, don't worry about it. This should be a quick rise recipe if you're using quick rise yeast. So about 45 minutes to an hour for the rise. I'm gonna cut that in half with 30 minutes. COVID-19, people are still home. <laughs> 30 minutes in my Instant Pot on the yogurt low setting. So when this is risen, or my yeast is alive, we'll come back. Okay, so to this, we are going to add one cup of very warm water, much like we did to proof our, uh, our yeast and make sure it was alive. We're gonna add a tablespoon and a half of uh, salted room temperature butter that I've literally just cubed. Okay, it's just gonna make it easier for everything to kind of uh, break apart. Oh, we're going to add a, another half a teaspoon of just regular old white sugar. Okay, one teaspoon of salt, which I just added in. And then we're going to do four cups of uh, flour. Four cups. So I'm going to get all my cups of flour in measured and in here, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're going to insert our dough hook here. I'm backwards. I've never, <laughs> I never worked this way. All right, we're going to put her down. And we're going to incorporate it all first. We're going to start out at one because we don't have the shield here to block all of the uh, flour that's going to shoot out at me if I put it up higher. And once it's all incorporated, okay, and mixed, we're going to see the tackiness. If it's still a little tacky, then I'll add another tablespoon or so of flour. 
If it's not, I'm going to turn up the speed to about medium and I'm going to let the dough hook here do all the kneading for me for about 5 to 10 minutes. Okay? And the flour is just going to completely pull away from the sides of the bowl here as it continues and goes. So just while this is mixing, a uh, milestone for me is um, I'm doing giveaways, right? So if I can get to 100 subscribers, then my cost, completely new, I'm going to do a draw and one of those lucky subscribers is going to receive one of my favorite kitchen gadgets that I can absolutely not live without. Um, just as a simple thank you. And every time I hit a milestone, bless, I'm going to do the same thing. All right, so we're going to stop it so I can see the texture. You know what? It's not that sticky. So, I mean, it's going to need for another five minutes or so. I think I'm, I'm liking it like that. I'm going to put it back on. I'm going to put the lock on so she doesn't go everywhere. Oh, it's, a, it's stickier than I thought. Yeah, she is. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon at a time, right? Because you can always put more in. You can just never take out, right? So we're going to do one tablespoon. And we're just going to turn up the heat. Or the, the temp. <laughs> the speed. Oh, boy. And I'm going to let it go for five minutes. We'll see you in five minutes, all right? Oh, at this point... Preheat your oven to 385 degrees because it's going to go for 25 to 30 minutes. Now I'm using um, kind of like a banana loaf pan because that's what I've got. We're not fancy about it here. So this recipe will make two 8x9s of those and you're going to want to grease them. So preheat your oven to 385 degrees. Don't turn on your oven yet. Don't, don't do that. I forgot that we need to let this rise. Oh, silly me. So once this is, it's still going. Once this is, is done, I'm going to put it in my instant pot. We'll come back there, but I'll tell you what you can do if you don't have an instant pot to let things kind of rise. Okay, so I have just put some oil into my instant pot. Um, and I am just scraping my dough out of my stand mixer bowl. It's, it's honestly, it's not that sticky. It's really, really not. It's just, it's nice and warm. So it just needs a little help coming out. See? Not bad at all. So once, by the way, how many flowers is that worth? Like I made a whole hot mess and off camera, I'm sure you would have enjoyed it, people. I dropped my instant butt lid completely on my foot and I screamed. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to um, make sure that our dough here is all coated with some oil, right? We want to grease it all really, really well. So I literally just throw oil in the bottom, and I kind of just roll the dough around, and then I make sure I get it all over the sides because as the, uh, the dough rises, that's kind of where it's going to go and I don't want it to get stuck and me have to pry it off because that will deflate the dough which will defeat the purpose of rising it, right? Alright, so I'm going to... Alright, so I've got everything in my instant pot. Lid on. We're gonna go to my yogurt setting. I'm going to just leave it on the hour, but I'll, I'll get it in 30 minutes or so. So while this is going, um, in the last 10 minutes, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 385 degrees. And currently I'm going to get the second batch going. Um, now you could do what I'm gonna do for the second batch, or this batch is gonna be for my uncle and I, right? Split into two loaves. The second batch, I'm not going to split it into two loaves. I'm going to leave it as one big kind of loaf. Um, I don't have that size of bread pan, I guess. So I'm going to be creative. I'll probably put it in a bundt cake pan. 
because it'll be cute, you know? And they're a family of 10. So when I say, like, this is going to do them for dinner, it'll do them for dinner. They don't care what it looks like. All they're going to be is appreciative because, unfortunately, hashtag COVID-19 sucks and they can't go to this store. So I'm going to get this going, get my other made, and we'll see you soon. All right, so more than the 30 minutes has uh, elapsed, but that's okay. Oh, she's, oh, I got stuck. She's looking nice. So I'm just going to transfer this to a lightly floured board, and then I'm going to get my second batch in just because I'm making double batches for people today. So I'm just going to do that real quick. All right, so this is the traditional uh, pan that I use to make white bread. Um, couldn't find my other one. It's somewhere. It doesn't matter. I'm going to improvise, right? I mean, it's not 100% ideal, but yo, when you have to improvise, it's okay to do it, okay? Don't feel like, oh my god, I don't have the exact same pan. What the heck do I do? I can't make this recipe now. Don't, don't feel like that. Okay, guys? So we're just going to cut this in half. we can and again I don't have one of those fancy you know like uh, scrapers so I legit use what I got okay don't go out and spend a fortune on all these lovely kitchen gadgets or subscribe to my channel and you could be one of those lucky people when I do draws that gets a fancy kitchen gadget <gasps> like share subscribe okay so I'm just literally folding this ever so gently into a log. I made sure to tuck in, right? And I'm being very ginger. I don't want to deflate it. I'm tucking in the sides, okay? And I'm literally just placing it in my pan. Now when she's in my pan, I'm just going to make sure I uh, somewhat shape it. It is going to continue to rise for another uh, another hour, okay? And I'm just going to loosely saran wrap the top. So again, in doing this one, I'm just going to, right? And it's going to continue to rise, so don't worry. Be happy. Oh, man. All right. And in very gently she goes. Okay. I'm just kind of forming her very gently with my fingers to the, the mold of the, the pan that I'm using. Now I'm going to cover her with saran wrap, and I'll let you take a look at that. Now when I'm loosely covering something with saran wrap, I literally use like the cheapest of the cheap dollar store <laughs> saran wrap. I reserve my like good saran wrap for when I need it, like when I'm doing my charred peppers. Um, so if you want to see what that looks like, uh, check the description below for a link to my roasted uh, chicken veggie stuffed um, chicken breast. Lord have mercy. So very loose and I'm going to put it in a warm place. So because I have my oven preheating, uh, I've got it resting on that. Okay. Very loose just like that. And really we want to protect it against the elements. We don't really want it to develop a really thick, uh, dry skin on the top. We are not going to be brushing this before we put it in the oven. We are going to brush it when it comes out. I know, so different, so weird. Okay, and we're just gonna let it hang out. That's it. We're just gonna let it hang out. And yeah. We'll see you in, you know what, we'll check on it in a half hour because it's already starting to rise. So, um, it's probably because I do have it on an element that is starting to heat up through the, uh, 
through the oven itself. So we'll see in about 26 minutes or so. All right, so it's been 54 minutes, longer than I thought, but that's okay. It's risen really nice. I'm going to be very ginger about taking off my saran wrap here because I don't want to deflate my bread. Okay. Oh, excited little ones. They're always excited when it comes to homemade bread. Like they would rather have this, obviously, than anything store bought. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it in my preheated 385 degree oven. And I'm going to check it after 25 minutes, but it will likely go for 30, okay? So I'm gonna set my timer. Alexa, set a timer for 25 minutes. Sorry, I hope that didn't set your Alexa's off. <laughs> Whoops. All right, we'll see you back in 25 minutes to check her. So I've just greased a bump pan. This is for the uh, second batch that I'm doing. This is the type of presentation I would do if I was making this for brunch when I had people over. Um, I would do the whole recipe just in here. It'd be a little bit more decorative um, and it's just, it, it's nice. So I'm still going to do the same process in greasing my, my pan and in lightly flouring my work surface, okay? And it's just really so things don't, don't stick. So I'm going to remove. Didn't she rise nicely? Yes, she did. Okay. so it is even and very gently I'm going to just pull right and spread it so that it is as even as possible and making sure that I pinch everything down and in now I did grease the bejesus out of this as well with some nice spray okay one part here that I have to finish tucking in. And this is really just, it's a nice brunch kind of uh, presentation when you've got people coming over and you wanna make some fresh bread. Um, you know, you put this on the table and it's a little bit of a showstopper. Like, not only did you make your own bread, but it's pretty. You know, like, yes, you can definitely do the two loaves and only put out one if you wanna reserve for yourselves, but they are a large family of 10, so in one household, God bless them. So just going to do this for them. And again, the same steps in lightly covering, okay? You don't wanna do it super crazy tight. We're just lightly covering. And I'm just going to put it back on the top of the, the stove, wash my hands, and I'm gonna let it hang out probably another half hour to 45 minutes. So we'll see you when we check the other loaves in, oh gosh, about 20 minutes now. See you soon. All right, my 25 minute timer has gone off, so let's open it up and take a look. They're looking good, guys, and it, the house smells wonderful. Oh. Look at these. Yep. Still looking good. Because they were smaller, they definitely needed 25 minutes. So let's close this for now. Yep. 
They're looking yummy. All right, so now that those are out of the oven, we're going to put our larger one in. And I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes. Okay guys, I've taken them out um, just so that I could melt about a tablespoon of salted butter and I'm going to lightly brush the top of them and then I'm going to put them back in there, in their, you know, um, their vessels to just kind of chill for about a half hour. So I'm literally, this is just, it's going to melt right in going to be lovely at a nice finishing touch. I did put some paper towel underneath to kind of catch this and if you notice I am doing this over a wired rack. Um, if you don't have a wired rack, I think I, I uh, said it in a previous video, that you can take out the insert of the countertop oven that you're not using that's not hot and you can do it on that. Uh, I often, especially Christmas time when I'm doing an obscene amount of baking, I will use the base of one of my Gotham steel metal trays and it may leave an imprint um, because it is a little bit of a harder surface but that's okay like nobody's really paying attention to the bottom people don't eat from the bottom of it you know while they're looking at it right so I'm just being nice and generous with my butter here okay and it's going to add a nice lovely richness going over the sides. So one for me, one for my uncles, and then the one in the oven will be for my friends. So I'm just going to set aside the remainder because I am using it uh, for the other one once it comes out of the oven. And now I'm just going to transition to help soften the top. It looks lovely. So that's going to hang out for about a half hour. We'll see you when we pull out the other one, all right? All right, my timer has gone off. Solos, move. Move, Poochies. So, move, Poochies. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. She looks pretty. Okay, so I'm going to let it hang out here for a minute to two minutes, and then I'm going to transfer it to the wire rack, brush it with butter, and then put it back in for another half hour. Oh, look, husbandito's calling. All right. struggling moms just like uh, just like me Lord have mercy I mean the province is supposed to start reopening today and I live in Ontario Canada and the premier uh, Mr. Ford is supposed to be making an announcement and the Minister of Education Mr. Lecce Lecce man you better have some good good news for me you know life what are you going to do so this is the part here I don't know if you can see it I probably could have pinched it a little bit better but it's looking mighty fine it's oh my god I can't even begin to describe to you what my house smells like but it's looking beautiful so the top here just adds another nice dimension of flavor and it softens the top okay 
So I'm going to put this back in our uh, oh our pan here that it baked in. That wasn't that all fun, that was it. And now our other bread has been resting for a half hour. So the top is all nice and soft, the way white bread should be. It smells delicious, so I'm just gonna let it let it cool completely. And when all these are nice and cool, I'm going to package them. I'm going to use proper social distancing, mask, gloves, two meters apart, knock on people's doors, place it there and run. Kind of like Nikki Nikki Nine Door, but mixed with Santa Claus because I'm delivering bread. Or is, I don't know. Let's break it down, shall we? As we always do. So, one little packet of the yeast. Right now, because I'm paying pandemic prices, it was $3 for three packets. So divide that, because I used one okay for for each each load so these two was one packet so that's what we're going to base off of the fact that i did a double batch was because i had my own things that i needed to do so that's one dollar four cups of flour well i buy two kilo 20 kilos of flour at a time for what i pay at costco 15 bucks so four cups of flour at like 20 cents in the grand scheme of things so we're at like a dollar let's say a dollar and a quarter okay uh, the amount of butter I used I also get it at Costco for 425 and combined I used three tablespoons so let's be generous and say 50 cents so we're at a buck 75 my sugar my salt let's say hella generous another quarter Two dollars. I made two loaves, which works out to be a dollar a piece. You can't even buy that at the grocery store. It's not filled with preservatives. It is super yummy, super moist. We'll cut into it later when I'm making sandwiches. What? Gonna be the best tuna sandwiches ever. <laughs> and really and truly, really, there you go. Now, if we're flipping it, we're gonna flip you. And we're doing our loaf here for brunch because you've got people coming over this was the full amount so two dollars to make all of that you put that on your brunch table you serve it with some lovely eggs uh, check out my egg waffle recipe which is legit just eggs and vegetables made in a waffle there's no additional flour there's no additional fat there's zero I'll link um, the video for that in the description below or even my frittata, like a lovely frittata. Oh my gosh. And you can even use that frittata recipe to do egg muffins, which will be in an upcoming video. I make that a lot when I have my in-laws over for a brunch or I've got, you know, people coming over for Christmas brunch. I'll link that video in the description below. Super yummy. You're going to wow everybody. And really, the stand mixer did like 99.9% .9 of all the work. You just had to add stuff in. As always, guys, if you like the content, share, like, subscribe. And I won't say the E-N-J-O-Y word yet because you're going to come back when I cut into the bread. We'll see you in like five hours. Doesn't that look lovely, guys? All right. Let's give her a slice. So I'm making this, well I made this for tuna uh, sandwiches. Now normally I would suggest using um, like an electric turkey knife. You know, it's still one of the things that I don't have in life. So, probably make it easier so you're not manhandling the bread like I am, but look at that. Pretty. So I am making hearty sandwiches, so I am going to cut them thicker. Uh, I'm totally cutting them on an angle, but my, 
My youngest told me he wanted a bread sandwich, so I'm reserving these two slices for him. Uh, I did do my deliveries today. And I dropped off with social distancing, wearing a mask and gloves. Uh, to, yeah. Look at that. That's so pretty. So fluffy. It is legit so fluffy. It's delicious. I'm going to get this cut up. I'll build a sandwich so you can see it. We can try it. Ooh, that means I could try it before my husband Eno gets home. All right. She's looking pretty, guys. So I'm just going to take whatever filling. I mean, even if you wanted to do like uh, toast and butter or jam and cream cheese, um, that would be absolutely divine. And, oh man, peanut butter. Mm, so much better than on some celery. It's a nice hearty sandwich. No, that's not how we do it. We always cut it in half. Oh man, I would love to have a bite of that one. I'm not going to, I'll have an itty bitty one just to try, but I'm gonna get all these built for dinner. All right, I'm gonna give it one bite. It's perfectly soft, it's fluffy. It's, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Uh, put in my bowl so I don't cross contaminate, even though it's my family. Still. There you go, guys. Crazy way, simple way to make homemade white bread at home. Cost effective, delicious every time. If you like the content, share, subscribe. Like, and as always, my friends, enjoy.